Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our fourth episode on witnessing. And our fourth episode is on salt and light. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, who is precious unto us, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, we are grateful that you've given us yet another time where we can hear your word and even receive it so that we can now do mighty things in your kingdom. We pray that as we continue to receive your word, Lord Jesus Christ, only that which you want us to receive and what is meant to do, Father, it will accomplish it for your glory. Father, touch it in every life that will hear it and open many doors for this word to reach as many people as can be reached so that, Lord, many can turn to you. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I ask you, please, listen to other messages if you've not had an opportunity. Uh, that is uh, the first, uh, the other three episodes, and you're going to be blessed. And also, looking forward to even meet you again, even in the next episode. Um, let's have a look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, from the Amplified Bible. You are the salt of the earth, but if this salt has lost its taste, that is purpose. How can it make so? How can it be made salty? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked on by people. When the walkways are wet and slippery, you are the light of the. Um, uh, you are the light that is Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your father who is in heaven well in ancient times salt was often used as a preservative now, similarly, as followers of Christ are to preserve both the gospel message and Christian values in the secular world. You see, we, we have Christ, the followers of Christ, we have to preserve the gospel message because the gospel message has to be preached in our, in our words, in our deeds, in our lifestyle. And uh, the Christian values have also to be preserved because the world wants other things. They want things that for sure the values you look at them is some of them is you don't want to even talk about them or even think and imagine that they are existing in our times. But they are there. But what do we do? The gospel has to be preserved even in these situations. Well, when you look at the salt from the Dead Sea, that is why it's talking about when salt loses its, uh, its, um, its taste. That is when you do not continue to share the gospel in the marketplace where you are and anywhere else where you will be found, then you have lost your taste. If you have stopped talking about Christ, if you are not preaching Christ, if you are not sharing the word of God as it is, then you know what? You have lost your taste. And like the Dead Sea, what will happen is if the salt loses its, its taste, it becomes impure itself because its power is to preserve so that something can remain pure. But you yourself, if you lose that taste of the gospel, then you lose, in, you become, it becomes, you are, it's the, like the salt in the Dead Sea, which contains impurities that affect its qualities as a seasoning and as a preservative. Why? Because it's enclosed. It doesn't move out. It is just remains there. So if you just remain there, your church that just wants people in and not go out to go and minister, to go and share Christ, even when they are going into the marketplace, they can't share Christ, then that it becomes a tasteless place. May we be tasty 
and we become tasty by sharing that word of God. And share that word of God, that is the disciples of Christ, our work is to influence the world for good. We influence the world. Can you be ready and available to do that? In Isaiah 42 verse 6, I am the Lord. I am call, I have called you the Messiah in righteousness for a righteous purpose. I will also take you by the hand and keep watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, Israel, as a light to the nations. So Christ from the word go, the Lord's purpose for him was for him to walk in righteousness. He was called for a righteous purpose and appointed for a covenant people so that to become a light to the nations. So Christ in himself, he was to have us, having we become the light to the nations. In Luke 2, 28 to 32, also from the Amplified class, uh, no Amplified Bible, Simon took him into his hands, that is Jesus, he took Jesus into his hands, and blessed and praised and thanked God and said, now, Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to leave this world in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, and light for revelation to the Gentiles, to disclose what was previously unknown, and to bring the praise and honor and glory of your people Israel. So Simon felt, after embracing and after holding Christ in his hands, he knew this was the Messiah, he knew this was the salvation. And the purpose of this salvation was to become light, for re a light for revelation to the Gentiles. That is to disclose what was previously unknown, that which the, the, the Gentiles were not even allowed even to think about or even imagine that they would belong. But now they have the light, they have known God, the Lord Almighty, and bring glory, praise, and honor, and glory to, God, to God's people. In Mark chapter 4, verses 21, also from the Amplified Bible, he said to them, A lamb is not brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed. Is it, is it not brought in to be put on the lampstand? So if you do not proclaim the gospel, if you do not talk about Christ, if you don't have the message of, uh, of salvation, you don't have that message wherever you are, then you are like a lamb that has been put under the, the bed or under the table. You don't do that. We always put the lamps up so that it can, it, we can see the brightness and the light. The light can be seen by everyone. It can lighten up the place so that we are able to see and we are able to do what was meant for us to be to do. To do. So we, you, you don't become that one who is, who is under the bed. Become a lampstand. A lamp, become, can, can you have your light on the lampstand where everyone can see? Don't hide Christ. Let him be seen by the world. Luke 8, 16, from the Amplified Bible. Now no one lights a lamp and then covers it with a container to hide it or puts it under a bed. Instead, he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. So can you, in wherever God has positioned you, become that light that is on the lampstand? When people see, let them see the brightness. When people hear you talk, let them enjoy the talk. Sometimes Christians are full of jokes, just like the world. Let me tell you, are your talks bringing glory and honor to the Lord? Or in whatever you're talking about, is it adding value in people's life and especially bringing people into the kingdom? Having people know about Christ, that is what we are called to do. May the Lord help us to become light and light that is on the lampstand light that people can see can we become salt 
the salt that is going to um, to hinder the spread of corruption. Uh, salt that will create a thirst in people's lives. Salt that will enhance flavor. Let us live that kind of life. Let us be the light to the nations. Let us confess the same task as his followers who are to be the light of the world, reflecting his light into the world's darkness. So Christians, can we allow God's light to be on full display in our lives? Our responsibility is to guard against anything that can separate us from the only source of light and to let our light so shine that others will see the reality of Christ in us and glorify our Heavenly Father. May the Lord bless you as you choose to become salt and light to the world. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, mother to the amazing champions and mother to the CMCs around the globe. Please log into our website at www.agracem.org purpose to partner with this ministry so that we can continue to spread the gospel all over the world together with the champions and together with the CMCs. And God is going to bless you. Purpose also to choose to actually follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki and also at Karuki Bishop Dr. Grace. Like, subscribe, share. Let's hear your comments on how you're becoming salt and light and what God is doing as you become one that is a great messenger that is influencing the world and bringing them to Christ. Be blessed for now. Shalom, shalom.